These 456 people have just become United States citizens. I do. It was a naturalization ceremony, and to watch all of those people from each of those countries get up when I call their country, it's awesome. It means a lot. <laughs> I've been waiting for this day um, since I first became a resident, which was uh, when I was eight years old. Yes, I'm excited for that. <laughs> Everyone here has their own story of how they got their citizenship and the often long and complicated path it took to get here. But those pathways are getting narrow. Hi. Hi. I'm here for the training. I'm Miranda. I'm Miranda Roberts. I'm the volunteer coordinator at Refugee Services of Texas. We are hosting a volunteer training and orientation for new welcome team members. And so welcome team members, they uh, set up the apartments for the families. They do an airport pickup. They help transport them to different appointments throughout Austin. Um, really, they're introducing them to the community, being their first American friends that they have here. This is great. This is going to be a good training. But with everything that's happening with the border crisis, we've certainly seen um, upwards of 60 to 70 volunteers signing up for our orientations and trainings. The only problem? RST can only offer services to people who've been granted asylum or refugee status. And the Trump administration is granting that status to fewer and fewer people. With the, President Obama, he had set the bar at 110,000 incoming refugees for that year. And then when President Trump came in, uh, he reduced that number to 50,000. <laughs> Santos has been in the U.S. since the 80s. He gained legal status under the Immigration Reform and Control Act. Santos is legally safe, but the policy crackdown still has him on edge, and it's making it difficult for him to safely get his family out of Honduras. Digamos, ha hecho una vida aquí, pues. Vino el hijo Wilson, que me lo ayudaron por medio de esta organización a traerlo hacia acá. Y estamos esperando que vengan los otros, los otros hermanos, pues, mis otros hijos. Wilson arrived via the Central American Miners Program, which I'll have Susan Stastny with RST explain. It helped uh, uh, parents from Honduras and Guatemala and El Salvador apply for their, their children legally. And so it made a, a safe and uh, legal way for children to be reuniting with their family. That program was quietly eliminated last year. Was there any reason given, given for getting rid of the program? There was no reason to give it. <laughs> Getting refugee status can take years, but many people don't have that kind of time. Yo salí huyendo por la violencia que sufría en mi país. Cuando migración me agarró a mí en la frontera después de haber cruzado el río, estuve detenida en la primera detención que me llevaron fue a Hidalgo. Estoy preocupada porque él no habría dado una oportunidad, porque él no nos puede deportar, porque es que nos van a mandar allá a que nos maten. Nos merecemos una oportunidad. Porque si decidimos huir, es porque no aguantamos la violencia, no tenemos autoridad, no tenemos quien nos, nos proteja. Porque si hubieran autoridades que nos protege, protegieran, no, no huyéramos a otro país. Their best chance of entry runs along the southern border. And for asylum seekers, getting help quite literally depends on where they're standing. Our laws require that an asylum seeker be inside the United States. You cannot apply for asylum if you're outside of the country. So, and the statute says it doesn't matter how you entered, but that you have to be inside. The legal way to do it is to show up at a port of entry. Um, this is Matt Mackiewicz, head of the Travis County Republican Party. But it really does matter. There's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. If you come to the country wanting to seek asylum, but the first thing you do is enter illegally, you've committed a crime. Entering the country illegally is a misdemeanor, but that charge seriously impedes a person's chances of getting asylum. But entering the country the legal way has gotten complicated. What the Trump administration did in May was that they started posting Border Patrol officers in front of essentially the, the bridges, so that asylum seekers who wanted to come to the port of entry were prohibited from doing that. And they were told, come back later, we're not accepting people today, wait five hours, whatever. But, but the point is that the Border Patrol officers weren't even allowing people to get to the point of entry to apply for asylum. And if they can't get in the country, they can't claim asylum. 
So that leaves the only other option, which is to cross the border, not at a point of entry. So that would be like getting a, an inner tube and coming across the river. I would equate an asylum trial to a criminal defendant who's being charged with a serious felony. Each individual final hearing is four or five hours with hundreds of pages of evidence and, and um, witness or expert testimony included with a cross-examination by the government attorney. It's a full-fledged court hearing. That trial determines whether they're granted asylum or deported but it can take years to get a hearing. Other programs that provided safe and legal pathways for immigrants have also been cut or severely limited. Last year, Trump ended the DACA program, which provided a pathway to citizenship for young adults brought to the country when they were children, leaving them in limbo. Earlier this year, TPS, or Temporary Protected Status, was cut. This program let people from countries rocked by war or natural disasters live and work in the United States. Reports have circulated about the military discharging immigrant enlistees, and recently courts upheld the so-called Muslim travel ban. All this has groups like RST concerned that people will try and enter the country by much more dangerous means. And it does uh, have implications for increasing in trafficking. We are hopeful that our survivors of um, human trafficking program is going to be able to help um, any children, any minors that are put in those situations that are lost in the system so that we're able to get them back reunited with their families. Make sure you guys sign up here, like you sign your photo. You do it in black ink when you get home. All right? Congratulations. Yeah. All right. The problem exists because someone entered the country illegally. It is the foundational issue here. Uh, once they've entered illegally, uh, I don't know of any Republicans that are in favor of separating parents and children. They should stay together. But uh, ultimately, we have to enforce our laws, and I think the Republican Party does stand for enforcing our laws. If people don't like the laws, run for Congress, serve in Congress, try to change the laws. And that's what some new citizens are getting ready to do. I felt I couldn't speak up, so I kind of just muted myself. So going forward, hopefully I can, you know, speak a little bit more when something wrong is happening. <laughs>